So like I said in my video, there are a ton of great or good movies or essential movies that everyone should see before you die that I have not seen yet. So I figured, why not rank all 12 movies that I've seen for the first time since quarantine started? So let's get into it. Now before we get too deep into anything, I just want to preface a few things first. A, I don't hate any of the movies that I've seen thus far. Some movies on this list are definitely, definitely better films than some of the others. I'm just saying that I liked and I at least enjoyed every film on this list. And two, obviously, this is my opinion. It doesn't have to match your opinion. That's the great thing about movies is that we can all have different opinions and talk about them in a civil manner. So obviously, this is just my list. It doesn't mean it's the right one. It just means it's mine. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Coming in in last place at number 12 is Ice Age Collision Course. Now, I am a big fan of the Ice Age franchise. Um, I didn't have very high expectations going into this movie, so maybe that's why I enjoyed it a little more than I thought I would. Obviously, it is probably the worst Ice Age film, and the problem I have with it is simply series fatigue. I think the original Ice Age trilogy, 1, 2, and 3, the original The Meltdown and Dawn of the Dinosaurs, is a very, very, very solid trilogy of animated films. I just think they should have stopped there. If I'm being honest, they could have stopped at one, and it would have been fine. I might be in the minority here, but I think I, the first Ice Age is an animated masterpiece. I think it's one of the greatest animated films ever made. I absolutely love it. I can't watch it without tearing up. But you just get so tired of seeing the same things over and over again. They try to change it up, but in the end, it's just the same thing over and over again, and it got kind of tiresome. Obviously, the cast is still good. The animation was gorgeous to look at, but it comes at number 12 just because it was a pretty shallow film. Coming in in the next place at number 11, I have Superman Batman Apocalypse. This is a anim DC animated film that I just recently watched yesterday, actually, on DC Universe, and I had a good time. You know, um, it was really simple, it was, it was really, really short, which is a common theme with the DC animated films, but I didn't have too many big problems with it, just, just for the fact that it, it moved so quickly. It was, I think it's an, like an hour and 14 minutes, but there's a lot of stuff there that has to cover. So they're on Earth, and then they're in Themyscira, and then they're on Apocalypse, and they're back in Themyscira. It moves at such a quick pace, and obviously I liked all of it because, you know, you have Tim Daly playing Superman and um, Kevin Conroy playing Batman. You have the great cast there that usually repri reprises their roles within the DC animated universe, and it was great. You know, it was a, it, the animation was good. For It's a 2010 film. So everything worked great, but they just needed an extra, I would say, even 20, 30 minutes onto the runtime. It moved so incredibly fast, and that was the big glaring issue with this one, unfortunately. At number 10, we have Matrix Reloaded. Now, as you'll see later on in this list, I also watched The Matrix, the first Matrix, for the first time since quarantine started. And I think the first Matrix was fantastic, but this movie, like I said at the beginning, I like, all, I enjoy all these films on this list, thankfully. But this one just felt off i think everything that worked with the first one worked so well that when you go into the second matrix you're almost expecting it to be as good as that like you are with every good sequel jurassic park and then the lost world you know all of the you know avengers and then avengers 2 matrix and then matrix 2 you're going to have those expectations and i think it was just very toned down and the dance scene i think is the dumbest scene in the movie, it really, really took me out of the film. I thought it was very out of place and very, very, very corny and cheesy, and I did not like it. Um, I liked bringing Harry Lennox in. Uh, he's a great underrated actor. You know, he's in The Blacklist, too. He's also in the DCEU. It was good to see him in there. But, yeah, it comes in number 10 just because it doesn't reach any of the heights that the first one took the series to. Coming in at number 9, we have Solo, A Star Wars Story. Now, I am a massive fan of Star Wars, so it was kind of surprising that I hadn't seen Solo before this past couple months, and the simple fact is, I wasn't interested. You know, same thing with Black Widow. Obviously, I'm looking forward to the film, but they kill off Han Solo, and then two years later, they decide to make a movie about him. Some of the stakes are gone, because, you know, you know he doesn't die, which obviously... You know, whatever. You know he doesn't die because he's in The Force Awakens. You know Chewie doesn't die because he's in The Force Awakens. So there's some of the stakes 
that are taken down. But if you go into this movie just wanting a good, fun adventure within the Star Wars universe with not many stakes and not a ton of emotion, kind of a shallow plot, but the cast does a great job. And of course, the CGI is absolutely stunning. All the cast brings their all. It's a great, fun adventure within Star Wars. Just don't expect anything too much. Coming in at number eight, we have Split. Now, I recently watched the entire Unbreakable trilogy, Unbreakable Split, Glass, within the past couple weeks, actually, or like the last two weeks, I watched all three of them back to back to back. Um, this was my least favorite of the trilogy. Um, it was still a very well-made film. Uh, I'd probably give it a 3.5 out of 5, probably. Um, it was very, very good, and obviously James McAvoy carries the film. He, Him and Anya Taylor-Joy, their chemistry is spot on, and both of them, they're such talented actors, and I'm glad that Anya Taylor-Joy is finding more work because she deserves it. She's a fantastic actress. And obviously James McAvoy is too, and he proves it in this film by having so many different personalities. You guys all know the premise, the, the girls get kidnapped, blah, blah, blah. And... I have two big problems with this one. One, the two other girls that are there with Anya Taylor-Joy are trying too hard to act. They are, obviously, you, some of you might act hysterical in this situation, which is totally understandable. You know, you're getting kidnapped by this guy who supposedly has this many personalities, so it makes sense that you would act like that. But they were just acting so outlandish and so extra that it really took me out of the film for some of their scenes that they were in. Anya Taylor-Joy has a great backstory, and she acted all of her scenes flawlessly. So, and the ending twist was a little underwhelming. I liked it. You know, I obviously always love uh, M. Night Shyamalan's twist endings, but it was a little underwhelming. So thank goodness the end, end, end of the movie was redeemed when Bruce Willis shows up, and it turns out this movie takes place in the Unbreakable Universe. That saved the film for me. But yeah, it was a it was a really, really, really good film with great acting. Some parts were just a little unnecessary. Coming in at number seven, we have Superman Returns. Now, this was actually my favorite Superman film for a while. I watched this, I think, at the very end of March, so it's been a while, but I recently rewatched it and I love it. I think Brendan Routh is an exceptional Clark Kent and a great Superman. I think that the entire cast brings their all and the reviews, obviously, you know, a lot of people say it's slow, a lot of people say it's boring, and I get that, you know, but I think this film is, it's obviously, it's slow on purpose, it is kind of a slow burning film, but then you get to spend more time with Clark Kent, and his problems, you know, his, his person problems, not his Superman problems, his person problems, and then obviously, disregarding everything happening right now, Kevin Spacey is a fabulous Lex Luthor. I think he was absolutely fantastic. I think he was just as good as Marlon Brando was in the original first two Superman films with Christopher Reeve. And I just think it's a very, very good and very, very underrated film. Obviously, some of the slow parts are a little too slow and they go on for a little too long. That's my main problem with this film. But I did appreciate some of the slowing down that this film tried to do. Coming in at number six, we have Armageddon. Now, I fully intend and plan on releasing a full-length review of this film in the coming weeks. And I, I couldn't believe that I had, neither could my uncle. He couldn't believe that I'd never seen Armageddon. So we watched it for the first time. It was on HBO. Thankfully, I didn't own it. But, and I just had a blast. Um, I don't even really have any major flaws with this film. Just for the fact that it's, it's not emotionally shallow. Because there are a lot of emotional points in this film. It's just... It doesn't do anything to switch, you know, it doesn't change the formula or anything, which which I can I can give it credit for, but it's just a fun, if you turn your brain off, it's just a fun ride. You know, the entire thing is just a blast. Everything from the characters and their chemistry, them going up into space, and the space shuttles flying two feet apart and somehow not hitting each other. I thought that was a really funny part. My dad and my uncle were really, that, that was really funny them going up to the, the, the asteroid and planting a nuke and blowing it up. The whole thing is just extremely ridiculous. But if you just turn your brain off and you just sit there with your snacks and your drink and you have a good time, I think you will really, really enjoy it. I loved Armageddon. Now coming in in the top five, at number five, we have Unbreakable. Now, this is a film that I can get behind a slow burn. I think this film... 
subverted all of my expectations. Every single one of them was subverted. And I love it for that. I think Unbreakable is a brilliantly made film. From here on out, this is where I think all of these films are not perfect. Maybe number one and number two are perfect. But they are they work so well. And everything about this film, in my opinion, works. Obviously, a lot of people think it's boring. A lot of people aren't a fan of the slow burn. And that's fine. You know, a lot of people can't sit down for an almost two-hour film and have all their expectations subverted, you know. It is a slow burn. I'm not going to say it's an action-packed film. It's not. But when you... Bruce Willis obviously brings his all, and the the drama between his son and his, his ex-wife or wife, whatever they're trying to do, and when he finds out superpowers, and then he meets Mr. Glass, the film is just fantastic, and it's a great, great introduction to the Unbreakable trilogy, and I absolutely love this film. Now, this may be a little unpopular, but coming in at number four, I have Glass. Now, there's a simple reason I put Glass above Unbreakable. But let me say something first. Number one, I think the dialogue in Unbreakable is better than the dialogue in Glass. I think some of the action scenes in Unbreakable are better than some of the action scenes in Glass. I think the screenplay, the script, is better a lot of the times in Unbreakable than it is in Glass. But the simple fact is... I am a sucker for trilogy endings, and they have to be good. Like, Return of the King. I know that a lot, like, Fellowship, I think a lot of that movie is better than Return of the King, but the simple fact is, same reason I like X-Men 3 and Spider-Man 3 the most, is that it closes off the trilogy so well, and that's not easy to do. One, in movie one, you have to introduce everything. Two, you just need to carry everything over from one to three. It's like, it's the middle chapter. Three, you have to finish it in a satisfying way. And did Glass? Absolutely it did. When I first got done watching Glass, I did not like it at all. I was like, I did not like how they treated certain characters, how they handled certain things. I was like, there's no way that's real. There's no way Shyamalan just did that. But the more I thought about it and the more I watched these scenes unfold, when you see um, uh, David Dunn's uh, son, and then you see Anna Taylor-Joy's character, and then you see Elijah Glass's mother, and you see them come together and you're like, oh you see what they were trying to do obviously the scene that comes before that is very very sad you know they you know you know but i thought the ending was so brilliant because it took everything that we thought we knew and it crumpled it up and it threw it over his shoulder over our shoulders just like luke did in the last jedi those are our expectations crumple them up he threw them behind his back and Shyamalan took us all for a ride that i will never ever forget Kicking off the top three, we have The Matrix. Now, I think The Matrix is a near-perfect film. I think they took a concept that was so, so bizarre. There are so many things in this film that stick out and make this film iconic, whether it's the, the bug going into Keanu Reeves' belly button or, you know, the iconic lines like Mr. Anderson and the, the iconic characters, Morpheus, Trinity, the action, and just the concept as a whole as the entire world that we're living in is a is fake it's a simulation and then once you pull your plug in the real world you can plug yourself into the matrix but then you see that the real world is actually total garbage that robots have taken over the world and they are they're making people it's just so so outlandish and a lot of directors would not be able to handle this property i think the two directors I keep forgetting, Wachowski, I think that was their name. I think that they were one of the few directors that could have made this work as well as it did. Because this is an easy thing that could have been that could have been totally screwed up. They could have made it way too corny, way too cheesy, but they didn't. They kept it serious, they kept it rated R, they kept it kind of dark. And I absolutely loved it. The action scenes are fantastic. I think they went a little too far with some action scenes, like I said in my review. Some of them went a little too long became a little mind-numbing, I'm like, because they kept showing off that one feature where it could zoom around, like, okay, okay, we know you can do that, thank you, but everything else about this film just works so, so well, and that is why it comes in number three. Coming in at number two, we have one of my favorite sci-fi films of all time, and that is Inception. I think Inception is a near-flawless film. I don't even have really any complaints with it, whether I think it could be trimmed down by five or ten minutes. You know, I think it starts dragging in the end just a tad. But 
and there are some there are some scenes in the middle that I think could be shortened or taken out entirely, but I love this film. I have watched it. I watched it maybe six times in the past few months. This was one of the only films I woke up one morning. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna watch Inception because I've never seen it, and my friend at school told me it's good, so I turned it on and I watched it, and I was like. I sat there probably for 10 minutes in my bed thinking, what did I just watch? What was the ending? Is he dreaming? Is he not dreaming? Blah, 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 blah. So I was like, okay, I'll watch it again. I never do that. I can't recall a single time except watching Inception that I said, I'm going to watch it again in the same day. I never watched the same movie. This I never watched the same movie twice, maybe in in a month because I get tired of it. But I, I didn't, I wasn't tired. I'm still not tired of Inception. I could watch Inception every single day. I think it is a... It is a fascinating ride, and Christopher Nolan takes you on a ride that you will never forget. The characters are all so diverse with their their personalities and how they portray their characters, and everything just works so well in this film. I think it's a near flawless movie, and that is why it comes in at number two. But coming in at number one has to be The Sixth Sense by M. Night Shyamalan. This film is the epitome of twist endings plot twists i think this film everything about this film is perfect the characters the story the acting the music the effects the plot the ghosts everything in this film works and it works unimaginably well whether you're talking about him seeing the ghost him helping the ghosts you finding out that bruce willis was actually dead the entire time it it shocked me beyond belief when I watched it the first time. I just sat there on my couch, like, and my uncle just burst it out laughing. He's like, hi, ah, I knew it. I knew it would get you. You, you can't, if I, I wish I could watch this movie again for the first time. I do. I wish I could sit down and, all right, I'm going to watch it six times because I've never seen it before. Because now, this isn't the movie's fault, but now obviously the, the ending is ruined. But still, it is such a great film. Bruce Willis and the kid's name, I keep forgetting his name, Tony Collette, everyone in this film is bringing their all. M. Night Shyamalan, once again, he directed the crap out of this film. And you can see it behind and in front of the camera. It has Shyamalan written all over it with the twists, the plot twists. You know, everything just works so well. And that is why The Sixth Sense comes in undoubtedly at number one. So that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed doing this ranking. You know, I, I was just going to do a an unbreakable review, but I was like, you know what? I've watched quite a few movies that I've never seen before since quarantine started, so why not make a ranking on it? So thank you guys so much, as always, for watching. I look forward to hearing your guys' uh, comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video, and I will see you guys all in the next video.